Hello, Jim. Hey, Chris, how are you? Fine, and yourself? I am peachy keen, buddy, peachy keen. Good, good. So you're having a good week? Yes, I am. That's excellent. Making the best of it, Jim. <laughs> That's excellent, man. Uh, let's see, where is the... Well, I must not, what did I do with the file? Need to open some files here, see what's going on. We seem to have lost some information here. Hey, Lacey. Hello. Hello, Miss Lacey. Hello, hello. How is everyone this evening? Hi, Hi you can say hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't, isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> We're coming in awesome. from the pool today. I think we may have that type of weather next week. <laughs> it's a little windy today. Yesterday would have been a much better day to go, but we couldn't make it then, so we're here now. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're gonna get uh, the pool weather for a while here in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> in July, right? Yeah, well. I remember one year, 4th of July, one of the very first years I moved here. Um, and we uh, had, we used to have a, a big family get together uh, on the lakefront. And we all decided to jump in the lake and just about froze our tushes off and came back out and somebody, yeah. somebody checked the water temperature and it was 48 degrees on 4th of Ooh. July weekend. Ooh. That's cold. So, yeah, it takes a little while for that lake to warm up. <laughs> they say Lake Tahoe, it only changes about seven degrees between its coldest and its warmest. Well, that's kind of nice. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's cold. <laughs> oh, it's always cold? Yes, always cold. So oh, that's well. a snow melt. <laughs> okay, well, that's so nice then. <laughs> Good for the fish, I guess. That's right. Hey Jim, hi Lacey. Hey Shreen. Hello. Yeah, if you if you guys want uh, warmer temperatures, come down to Austin. July fourth, yeah. it will be hundred plus. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Have you uh, ever floated that river that runs through uh, San Marcos? Oh, the Comal River. No, uh, no, Jim, not yet. I uh, <laughs> every time we used to go down there, I would always drive up there. Yeah. And, it seemed like every time I was there, there was always a bunch of people on their inner tubes floating down that river. It's like uh, yes. being at Disneyland, but natural. Yes, exactly. It's a natural river, actually. Yep. Yeah, they do have a water park. It's called uh, Schlitterbahn uh, in New Braunfels, which is south of San Marcos. Actually, they have a couple of water rides that get water from the local, the uh, same river. You know, so, mm. yeah, pretty good. Mr. Daryl Murphy, Trevor, good evening. Jennifer, hey, Claudia, good evening. Alicia. Good evening. Hello. And Holly. Good evening. Evening.
Hey, Barbara. Hi. I had to use my phone. I can't, for some reason, my computer will not let me in into your meetings. So, I don't know. As it's, long it's, as you're it's in, that's what's most important. Well, it's always asking for a, um, a, you know, how you put the Zoom and then you have to put a password. So I never make it because I'm like, I can't get it on. So I just said, well, maybe I'll try my phone. Daryl said, try something else. And I said, okay. Anyway, how are you today? Peachy keen, peachy keen. Hey, Kevin and Fern, how are you guys? Hey, Jim, I'm good. How are you? Good. Peachy keen. Peachy Keen. How did, how did Jim? Hey, Fern. I take myself off mute. Good evening. Hey, Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Good evening, Barbara. We are going to have a conversation, you, me, and this computer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I've been doing is I've been sec uh, tapping the second link that's in the on the calendar, not the one that shows up in the location, but oh. the one that shows up um, after it says Zoom meeting. Oh, maybe I should try it because... I'm like, I don't think I've been on for weeks because I've been like, I never can get on. <laughs> so Daryl said, just try the another device. I'm thinking the only other device I have is my phone. So let me try that. So it apparently works. Good. Hey, Rich. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Quick question, since we're all here just chatting away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> does anyone have experience in underwriting um, triple net? Single tenant triple net lease? <laughs> I asked my team yesterday and I have some pointers, so I'm working on that. But I figure if somebody had experience, I can, I can leverage that experience. Don't all talk at one time. <laughs> oh, Jim, you're muted. So maybe you guys are talking. You just muted. Yeah, I do. Not. No, sorry. No. no experience doing that. <laughs> okay. Well, once is I learned, I'm sure. Is this an off-market uh, deal or an on-market deal? It's, it's, it's on-market, but they have not gotten any offers in about a week. And I actually like the asset. They listed, it came up in my list because they listed it as multifamily, but it has one um, single tenant in there that operates their business. And it's 5.25 million. And is it, um, how long is the lease for? 10 years. And Ten they're years. one year, they're one year in. My husband actually has experience working with the tenant 
um, because they're in the healthcare field. So, you know, if that one tenant falters, I have a backup because he could actually run the business if, if needed. And um, the tenant that is there, is it a big organization or? A... No. Okay. It's the mom and pop. Mom and pop. And yep. what is the rent escalator? Um, it is... So they are at 28,000 a month now, and it pops up to 30 actually this month. And so each year it goes up by about $2,000. So uh, if you can- A month. Look, yeah, if, so you can look at, if you can look at those numbers and figure out what the percentage is, Mm -hmm. And it'll be a lot easier for you to know the underwriting because uh, you want to do the same thing with expenses. Well, you don't, you don't really have to worry about the expenses because it's triple net, but right. um, you want to take a look at the contract, see what they're responsible for in, in regard to maintaining the asset okay. um, and um and what it's going to cost you, uh, you know, to, to get in, what the cap rate is, um, you, I mean, there's not that much to underwrite, I don't think, other right. than the rent escalator. Okay. And also trying to figure out what you think the taxes are going to do, and uh, are they paying in tri true triple net? They're paying the taxes also. also. Yeah, they're reimbursing the ten the um, seller for everything, the triple net and the insurance. Okay, and so then, the, seller's, the seller's paying, but then they're reimbursing him. Correct, okay. correct. And is it, like a, is it like assisted living? A behavioral health facility okay. that they do, um, they do emergency uh, housing. Gotcha. And so when you say the rent escalator, how much um, usually they have a contract that's so many years and if it's 10 years they'll mm -hmm. have a uh usually a guaranteed rent escalator each year meaning um three percent per year rent is increased or five percent per year or one percent per year and if it's three percent per year that sounds to me like you know how we would normally underwrite a deal and you're not responsible for any of the expenses. Right. You know, but you have to also plan for, okay, what if I, if they're giving you all the expenses, are they giving you all the expenses so you can underwrite it like a regular deal if you want to? No. So there's no, no. way to know if they, if it were to fall out and you had to turn it back into normal, you know. That's my family whatever, whatever it looks like, if it were multifamily mm -hmm. or, you know, you would have no way of knowing what the deal would look like. So you can't underwrite it without the expenses. So the only thing you could do there is take market rents, figure out what they are, um, and take half of the, half of that as an expense ratio and hope that those expenses would fall into that category and say, okay, does this make sense mm -hmm. this asking price? Okay, so it's roughly 3% um, increase every year. The way that they are showing the rent bumps, it looks like it's every other year that the rent increases, but that equates to roughly 7% every other year. So okay. three, three and a half. Yeah, you're usually gonna have to pay a little more because it's a triple net. Yes. Um, than what you would pay if it were regular. But that's risky with that type of, uh, unless you have a state contract. If you have a state contract, then that's, you know, I would, uh, and you said your brother might be able to back it up. And, My and husband. Run, your husband, okay. Yes. Uh, and Even better, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> uh, but um, 
does he have the ability or possibility of getting a government contract for the same thing? That's what um, I would try to look into. Yes, because we're considering going if, well, we're building this on the back end for plan B for this facility, but any facility um, for a veteran program. Mm -hmm. And so that's like one of our ultimate goals, because, you know, we talked about that before, um, which I'm working with Rhonda on that as well. So, you know, that's the backup plan for this facility. That's a great backup plan because there's a big need and right. things like the VASH program could help you. And that's a guaranteed tenant, especially if you could give them a similar deal and, and they would accept a 10 year contract, which they very well might. So, okay. Okay. All right. I don't think we're going to get anyone else on the call. So um, first thing I want to do, because I'm not sure everyone is aware, uh, I just found out here uh, a little bit ago and um, like to share uh, some great news about some more bulk package deals um, that uh, that uh, some of the guys have been working on. So I don't know who wants to step forward and talk about it. Let's see. I was going to call on you, Rich. So. I'm trying. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, wait. Wait. Okay, you there? Can you hear me? Yep. I was on mute. I'm using my phone right now. So, um, yeah, um, we're having a lot of good success on Team Four. We're we're working on you know four different properties, two in Ohio, two in Indiana. Perch, uh, combined units are like over 400 units. Uh, the combined purchase price between the four about 24 million. Um, the, the broker did send some, right as we put in the LOIs, they shared updated financials, which we're kind of going through those. We're not seeing a whole lot of changes. Um, it looks like we're kind of in the running here. And we just got to kind of put some final information together on how we're going to close this transaction and share it with them. They're doing a, allowing a walkthrough next week, which we're going to try to get one of our team members out there to one or at least one or two of the properties. And then if we make the final, obviously, if we get a signed contract, boy, I'll be flying out to, to all of them. <laughs> so it's exciting. It's a little overwhelming for at one time like this, but it's nice that we feel that we can reach out to the network and, and have a lot of support as well. So. And um, is this the uh, same original four that you guys were looking at? And um, we were talking about splitting up amongst teams and, and team six was helping you guys on? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So. And uh, as far as local Indiana and local Ohio, uh, do we already know who on the team uh, would be able to cover Let's see if I can find. Yeah, we have we have one in Indiana that can reach one of the properties pretty easily. And then it's about a three hour drive for the, the second property in Indiana. Then we put a, a request out on Slack asking for some help uh, through the network of boots on the ground in Ohio. What part of Ohio is that? You no, know, I knew that was going to come up, darn it. <laughs> and I don't have that the map right in front of me. I can, I'll, I'll definitely, I can shoot it over to you. Let's see. Let me try to, for some reason, my, my screen went out on my laptop and it's driving me nuts. Um, but I, I can definitely shoot, shoot over a map of the area for you. Sounds good. And were these in USDA areas, uh, Rich? Uh, one of them is. And the rest are not? Correct. Okay. All right. And I don't know how the pricing breaks down, but 24 million divided by 400 is roughly 60 K a door. Is that right? That sounds about right. Okay. And we definitely 1% rule on all of them. And yeah. Some. 
And, and what we, we find is Elkhart is an interesting little area where it, it needs a little TLC. And we reached out to the um, Economic Development Department and they were real excited when we told them we were going to go in and try to do some value add, fix up the property. And they shared some information about construction going on in the area, an on-ramp that'll give the property more visibility. Um, they were sharing information about how, how they desperately need housing in the area. And it's busting at the seams. So, and they were really nice. They were, they're, you know, they were saying, come on out here. We'll, we'll definitely host you and show you around. So that was positive. And three of the assets are in or around Elkhart, is that, or two of them? Two. Two of them, okay. Now they're, they're a couple hours apart. I shouldn't say around, but I mean, it's still kind of around. Okay, so one's in Elkhart and then one's in closer to? Uh, Lebanon. Lebanon, okay. Let's see. Are you talking and about Ohio or did you say Ohio? <laughs> No, oh. those two, those two are Indiana. Okay. Elkhart, Indiana and Lebanon, uh, Indiana. And then uh, in Ohio. Let's see. And I, my apologies for my laptop not being up. I was no, that's to... okay. We're just trying to get oh. some rough ideas here of how we might be able to help you guys take them down. One of the things I, I was going to suggest is many uh, people as you can get from the team I mean, mm -hmm. we don't want to. We don't need to overdo it and have ten people there. But um, having a couple of the partners show up is always a great sign. If you can uh, visit each of the properties, um, even if you have to um, kind of uh, bring somebody on board temporarily, you know, uh, to walk the Ohio properties and then somebody to walk the Indiana properties, it makes a big impression on the broker. And his suggestion to the seller, you know, hey, you've got uh, three LOIs on this and only two of the uh, owner groups actually showed up and toured the properties. Yeah, okay. That, and, and we're getting really good response from the team. They all want to be engaged. Nice. And then we, we're going to probably yeah, need some help for, for Ohio. Well, I know we have here in the in the group, we've got uh, several people. I think that's why Christopher was asking. He's from Kentucky. I'm assuming he's from northern Kentucky, um, which, you know, shares a border with uh, with Ohio. So if it's anywhere around Cincinnati, he might. I don't know. Is is are you within driving distance, Chris, of southern? Ohio? Yes, sir. OK. And um, and of course, we got Shaka. Uh, oh, yeah, Ohio came, came up earlier, um, but actually the there is a map in the drive. I'm trying to get I've got a different laptop now. I'm going to get to. And I'm going to try to share. I'll share the map. Let's see. And you can always reach out to team um, seven. They're never on these calls but they've got a couple of different people that live in Ohio that might be willing to help out. Oh, okay. Be glad to do that. Let's see. Just a second here. Let's see. Okay. And team eight has someone that lives in Ohio. Huh, okay. Let's see. Slate run. Okay, here we go. Give me just a second here. Nope, we have part of it on this, on the drive. It looks like we don't have all of it. Let's see. Yeah, it's only giving me for some reason. And I'm usually, okay, bear with me here, guys. I'm trying to, aha. Uh -huh. Let's see.
No, it's not the map I want yet. Yeah, let's see. Well, while you're looking for that, Rich, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, see what else we've got going on. Does anyone else have something they would like to share? Any other good news? Yeah, Jim, I'm going to be heading down to a Columbia, South Carolina Monday to start due diligence on Tanessa's deal. Fantastic. Um, was that Tuesday morning, Daryl, uh, or was it um, there's someone else that I think has a deal um, in South Carolina? I don't know about that. I wish, I wish I would have known. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember who it is. So no one here in, in the group has a deal in South Carolina going on right now that uh, if Daryl's going to be down there, he might be able to give you a hand. Okay. All right. I'm going to take that as a no. Daryl, how's, uh, how are we doing on uh, some of the, uh, the other stuff? Dayton is uh, coming along. Okay. Yes. Okay. So Dayton is coming along. Um, I sent out the investors packet. Probably everybody up here received, uh, received it. But the investors packet went out. We, we are raising capital now. And rate, we got to raise $2 million. The lender who handles our case, uh, he went on vacation. He called me and emailed me and let me know he's, he's on vacation to the 10th. So, uh, so right now, that part of the process is on hold until he, he gets back off of vacation. But um, otherwise, everything is flowing smoothly. As of right now, everything is flowing smoothly. We just got to get that $2 million now. Okay, Daryl, um, I'm going to set up two meetings. Uh, are you, can you pull up your calendar real quick? Sure enough can. Are you available tomorrow at 1.30? That'd be 2.30? For a half hour? Is that 2.30? 2.30 your time. Well, let's see. Hold on. Is that right? Are you an hour ahead of me? Yeah. Or okay. So yeah. Is there any way we two thirty your is time? Any, is there any way we could do three? We can do three. That was going to be my okay. second ask. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How how much time do you have at three? As much time as you would like. Then let's take an hour. And. And I will try to get um, these private equity folks um, on a call with us. Uh, both of them have expressed an interest in uh, some smaller deals, and see if uh, see if we can make that get that two million dollar deal done. Fantastic. And uh, I'll meet him. And the, the uh, scope of work, um, I know you'd been talking to George. Um, is there, um, have, you got a, have you got an actual construction schedule that you've started working on? And Yes, um, uh, uh, it was sent to me. I, I have the total construction cost, everything of what it's going to, of, of, uh, of, of the total cost of everything. And it, it is within our budget. We're doing very well there. And matter of fact, it's probably even a little more um, because he, he did cut me a little slack because I'm one of the, you know, one of the, the team members. But so I do have the schedule. I do have a, a total itemized breakdown of the interior, exterior costs and renovations. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, okay. I, let's also, I do have a... Uh, uh, um, a draft of the closing costs. Okay. All right. Uh, and and so, we're scheduled to close June 1st. So you, uh, that's less than 30 days. Yeah. So we need to kick it into high gear. Uh, we need to get next plan needs to be, I would set up like a phone bank and get all the team members uh, calling as many people. And I would start from here on out 
every day you need to know where did we, where are we with capital rates? How many people did we call? What was the response? You know, put together a spreadsheet, um, maybe interested, needs more information, not interested at this time, interested and um, is willing to commit X number of dollars, interested, uh, needs a follow-up, you know, but we need to know literally every day because um, the capital raise is the, there's going to be a lot of shit hitting the fan, but that is going to need to be the number one priority. And we need to put someone, you're going to be doing a lot of the deal stuff. We need to find someone who can kind of drive that piece of it and, uh, and have a literally have a daily check-in. Uh, if you're not having a daily phone call about capital raise, at the very least, you want to have that spreadsheet up and updated every single day, have each person updated it. I made this many phone calls. This was the result of, uh, you know, and if you can't name the, if you can't name the investor, then at the very least, give the investor an initial or a number or something. So we can say what happened with the investor number one, number two, number three. Sounds good. That's a winner. And I'll give you guys a little piece of advice when you're raising capital. It, it, no matter how much time you have, keep the calls as short as you can keep them. And literally, you can know within 30 seconds what you need to do. And you can either hang up. Well, you in 30 seconds, you know what you need to do and you need to hang up. Let me just put it that way. Don't try to sell the deal. 30 seconds and hang up. Put a timer and make that get a, a little timer, a 30 second timer from the dollar store. Set it for each call when it dings, say, hey, oh, I'm sorry, I've got another call. And they'll hear the ding. And your call needs to be something along the lines of, hey, Srini, this is Jim Biggs calling. I know that the last time we spoke that you said that you wanted me to keep you informed about any deals that I've got coming forward. And we have a deal right now. I know it's probably not the perfect deal for you, but are you interested in taking a look and, and see if you want to be in on the deal or not? Ding. Oh, Srini, I've got another call. Is that a yes or a no? You want to follow up or no, you're not interested at this time? You want some information? Srini, are you still with me? Yeah, it makes sense, Jim, because I know okay. uh, if not every call is going to turn into a... Uh, and if they say transfer. yes, just say, okay, great. Can I schedule a follow-up phone call with you? Yes, you can. Okay, what's a good day uh, in time for you, Srini? And then just write that down and hang up and make the follow-up phone call longer for explanation. But as soon as you end that day, you want to follow up with an email saying, hey, Srini, just needed a couple of more pieces of information for you in preparation for our phone call on Friday um, at 3 p.m. So you, do, you don't need that phone call. What you really need on that phone call is just a yes or a no, yes or a no, yes or a no. Expect out of every hundred people that you call, most of them are going to be a no. No, it's not the right time. No, I'm still thinking about it. No, this, no, that. Don't try to sell the deal, especially not on that first phone call. What you're trying to do is find out who are the interested parties and get rid of everyone else as fast as you can. And only talk to the interested parties. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Srini. Talk to you Friday. Yeah, I'm not a salesperson by Yeah. Well, so you I, don't and, and with that, you don't need to be, right? You're right. just saying, hey, um, and and say you haven't spoken to them in a long time. Right. Then I might say something along the lines of, hey, Daryl. We haven't spoken in quite a while, but the last time we did, I let you know that I was in real estate. You showed a little bit of interest in uh, being a real estate investor. Are you still interested? Yes. Yes or no? If he says yes, say, if I had the perfect deal for you, how soon might you be interested in investing? And don't worry, I don't have the perfect deal for you because you never do. You never have the perfect deal for anyone. Right. And he says, well, you know, if I had the perfect deal, I'd probably be ready this month. Okay, 
well, you know, I do have some deals in the pipeline. Can I follow up with you and, and maybe see if you want to take a look at any of them? Yeah. Okay. Next Monday at one. Okay. You know, just real, real fast. And if you're doing it like that, you can make 60 to 90, maybe even hundred phone calls in an hour. And that's what it's a numbers game. That's all it is a numbers game. So, and that's why people fail at it because they don't make it a numbers game. I've got a friend who has a hundred paper clips and he has two containers and every phone call, he takes it out and he throws it in the other container and makes it clang. And it's just a reminder to him, get to the next call, get to the next call, get to the next call. So, okay. All right. Um, team two, we ha have we officially migrated into a single team with who was it? Two was going to go with three. Five. Is that right? With five. Yeah. 25. Yeah, 25. Anybody from two or five? Anybody from 10, 25? I'm here, Lacey. Lacey, is that five? Is you guys? That's right. That's right. All right. Are you the um, only? So are, are you the only one on the call tonight? Chris, it, Gibson's on two. I'm Where's, here too. And Chris is here. The Geek and the Geek is here. Okay, Cedra's here. Okay, I'm with Team Two. Here. Too. Okay, and Claudia's here. Okay, uh, all right, yeah. great. So we've got great representation. So uh, do we have any uh, any progress? I know that Sidra and I spoke this week. She has a property in Marengo and she's putting together, she uh, met with the Economic Development Committee. I don't know what the outcome of that was, but she was putting together uh, some presentation work for you guys. Just to let you guys know, I thought um, I got uh, Marengo mixed up with another city that is just west of DeKalb. Marengo is actually in McHenry County uh, on one of our major interstate highways here in the Chicagoland area. It's literally halfway between our largest city in the state and our third largest city in the state. And our three largest cities, by the way, are all up here around Chicago. They're all what we would commonly refer to as greater Chicagoland, but it sits halfway between Rockford and Chicago on I-90, the Jane Byrne Expressway. And they, uh, they just finished putting in a new uh, on and off ramp there. And the last city they did that to was another city just west. I think it's just west. I think Huntley is west or east. I forget which way. Uh, and that city has been blowing up the last uh, two or three years because of that interchange. Because the state puts those interchanges where they want to see growth. And that's all I know. I don't know any more. Oh, I do want to know one more thing. Marengo is home to the largest um, train museum in Illinois. And I think one of the largest antique train um, collections in the country. And it is a real popular destination for, for trainees. Trainees, or did I mean trainees? Uh, really? Jokes like that are about as funny as a screen door on a submarine. So uh, <laughs> enough with my kid jokes. Uh, so anyway, I know that she has a deal there that uh, the rest of the team, if you guys don't have something else going, you know, uh, let's get on board and, and help get a deal to fruition. And uh, I think Lacey, did you say that we did not win? Um, we, we lost out on the RV park deal? Yeah, the um, 31 unit mobile home park in Georgia. Oh, the um, we got the verbal Georgia. okay. And then, yeah, we had the verbal okay. And then the seller, um, after the weekend, he said he needed a cash buyer. Okay. All cash buyer? Yeah, did we, did 100%. We, did we have a chance to underwrite the deal? Yeah, it didn't, um, it didn't make sense. Um, it didn't work for our business plan with a hundred percent. Okay. And remind me again, how much, how much was, what was the price tag on that 31 units? It was 1.3. I am looking at another um, mobile home park slash RV park um, in that same Georgia area. So underwriting that one, things look promising. Um, 
um, I have an email out to the broker and I'll give them a call tomorrow. I just found this one today. So okay. we'll work on that one too. Okay. Let's see, did, was there anything else going on, uh, Team 25? Any other well, possibilities? Uh, we found a, uh, a 48 unit right here in uh, Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Uh, it's Warsaw Place and Crittenden Place. Uh, I asked them about the whispering price. They said the 2.1 to 2.2. And then I, uh, I actually called him today, or excuse me, that was in the email when he gave me the whispering price. I called him today and uh, he said that someone else is kind of coming hard at it and that uh, that whispering price was going to be, looks like around 3.3, or excuse me, 2.3 to 2.4 now. So, and that's for 48 units uh, in Do two we, separate places. Okay, uh, how close together are they, Chris? Uh, one is literally five miles from Susan and I, and then the other one is literally eight miles from us. Okay, so we have to underwrite them separately and, and potentially, um, I don't know if we could get a loan if they're not close enough together. Uh, we might, well, we might be able to get a portfolio loan, a bridge loan. Do we know what the average rents are? Uh, 619. Wow. And they can go up another hundred okay. and, but they hold, are. Hold uh, who else is on, who else has looked at this deal with you, Chris? Uh, no one. All right, so everyone so. on this team 25, uh, literally drop everything that you're doing and look at that deal with Chris as quickly as you can. And if you guys think that it works, do not put an LOI, put a contract on that property like right now. If, if rents are, if uh, average rents are six something, you're buying it at 45, 46 a door, you're already you at like one in a one and a half percent rule. And if you can push rents another hundred dollars, you're almost at a two percent rule. Anything you can buy in that, unless it's literally falling down and you're gonna take over a, a rotten uh, goose nest, that sounds like a deal I don't need to ask very many questions about. Section eight uh, is housing. Uh, Mr. Fur. Okay. Christopher, isn't that the LIHTC building? Yes, it is. Yeah, but but don't, you have to. There was certain restrictions that you needed to check before you were able to see about pushing rents that high. Am I correct? Uh, he said that when they underwrote it, that eleven point. How do I say that? Um, it, it that the rent you would be able to raise the rent to another hundred dollars from said, what it is right now. The yes, the broker. And did he provide you with the LIHTC contract? And did, uh, and did he say there's a Laura on the property? Yes. Yeah, I see any documents. Laura. Yes, my wife, my wife okay. said there is. Okay, so make sure he provides you with both of those documents and the team try to review those together as fast as you can. Call the local HUD office and ask them what is maximum rents and that if they can help you understand the Laura, are you restricted in how much you can raise the rents? Okay. okay. The, the, the um, now I'm going to, um, land use -U restriction agreement, yep. land use restriction agreement. And it runs with the property, meaning you can't change it. Usually right, those, usually those 14 years, he said. 15 years, usually could be 30 years. And they usually run with the property. But you, you need to know those three things. You need to get a copy of the Laura, the HUD agreement, the LIHTC agreement, uh, call the HUD office and confirm with the HUD office. Yes, I can raise the rents this much. So they okay. he had called for offers on June the 6th, but he said it's going to be quicker than that. So it's well, that's I, why I, uh, you guys need to act on mm. it right away. Because right now, the way it sits, even if you're not raising rents, it seems like it's a pretty good deal. You know, you need to you need to see what the condition of the property is, but it looks like it's, it's good. We've, we've ran 
we looked at it looks good for that that type of monies yeah on the outside well when when are you able to tour the property i mean to go in and out i'm not for sure about that because i have you know haven't uh, talked to the broker about seeing inside but as far as i can we went to go kind of drive around, around. Carriers. yeah yeah okay. um well again try to find someone else in ohio uh or kentucky look on the um uh what what um are you what's closer what's a close uh, big city to you other than cincinnati uh florence kentucky uh lexington, lexington? Uh, kentucky okay i think georgetown have, i think we have a couple of members that uh i i think we have a member in lexington uh i'm certain we have a member in cincinnati so you know, on the on the GOB network drive, look under the advanced search feature and find out who lives within 75 miles. And so, and when they do live within 75 miles, Jim, what will ask, I be just ask seeking? them if they would be interested in, in working with you on this deal and can they tour it with you? Because again, the broker is not going to take you seriously if you're not if if they don't feel like they're talking to the owners, you know, if they don't feel like they're um, talking with the people that are going to buy the asset. If you don't care enough to come see it, why would you buy it? Right. But right where you are right now, at uh, forty six a door roughly, um, that's pretty good cash flowing property. If you're buying it, uh, if the rents are already over 600, that might be a deal that you just buy and operate. You don't, you know, you raise very little capital for CapEx. You know, if you're able to just operate the property, keep it clean, make sure that all maintenance requests are handled immediately. Don't make excuses, just get it done, get it fixed, run it like that and just operate on efficiencies. And that leaves room for the next buyer if they want. That's if you, do, if you don't wanna uh, keep it. But when that Laura runs out, uh, those things, you know, usually the value goes up substantially. The, uh, the operating expenses is, 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 is really high on this. Uh, looks like they've done a lot of, uh, you know, They've even paid the uh, 401k and they've they've done some, you know, like operating expenses very high. Yeah. Well, it sounds like an individual is running his whole business through the apartment complex. And they've yeah. had it for a long time, yeah. too, as well. So, if so. He's paying himself a 401k, he might be paying his wife a 401k. He might have um, a car payment coming out of it, you know, all kinds of things like that. Have it paying for all of his uh, family cell phone bill, just paying for marketing costs that he's putting somewhere else, all kinds of things that he might be doing. Paying himself an unreasonable salary. You just, you know, paying someone, a friend to do the maintenance work and paying them twice what it's worth. You know, you just don't know. The only thing you want to look out for on, on those expenses, uh, is there anything that is like uh, water that's out of the ordinary? Um, anything that would indicate that you've got major uh, leakage problems in maybe a, a boiler, you know, heating systems, plumbing, things that are not easily or cheap fixes. And in your due diligence, you look very hard. You know, find out when's the last time a roof was replaced. When's, um, if it's a brick building, when was the last time the entire building was tuck pointed? You know, just simple things. How old are the windows? Are they vinyl? Vinyl windows, you know, cheap, energy efficient, but they usually don't last more than 20, 25 years. Vinyl. 
but I would I would start looking at that one quickly and hard, guys. Okay, Thank you, Jim. Team 25. How about team? Uh, is team three still working alone or are they working with someone else? We're, we a, uh, we're still on our own. Hey, hey. We have seven people. <laughs> All right. We're doing well. Jennifer. We're going to have a, a, on our next call, we're going to determine if we want to see about adding more people or if we want to just, you know, stay strong at seven. So, I like that seven number. Um, I, seven I do too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to see if we can, if we can pull it together with seven, I think uh, that's what we'll try to do. So we'll see where everyone's thinking about that. Do uh, we have uh, any potential properties on the horizon, Jennifer? Um, we still have our uh, 14 unit, the, in Jacksonville, Arkansas, that uh, we've been yeah. talking back and forth with the uh, with billing and okay. And so I think we're, we've kind of negotiated to something about 990,000. So um, we're just, uh, working together to do a little bit more due diligence. Um, and then, uh, then I think we'll see about taking this, uh, taking this one down. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Um, team seven is not here. Team eight. I hear what about song. team six? Did I miss team six? That was, I thought that was team 46. <laughs> Yeah. No, th this is Fern from Team Six. Hey, Fern. Uh, oops, let me put, let me share my video. Uh, Pam's on vacation, so she asked me to kind of spearhead uh, this week. Excellent. Uh, is there anyone else on Team Six uh, on the call? Okay. I'm here. Um, Gerald. Oh, there you are. Okay. Okay. Um, so this week, uh, it seems like uh, a lot of our members are having. Uh, team members that is having a hard time uh, trying to find properties that are within the USDA territory that'll qualify for the financing. Um, as far as, uh, so actually, I, I, came, I actually came across another property this morning. So I'm not having any, at least not having any immediate problems trying to find properties. Uh, there, uh, there was a 40 unit that came up qualified for USDA financing. Uh, 40 unit asking a little more than 5 million. It was about 140,000 a door. Uh, the average rents on it are about a little more than eight, 800 a month. So obviously with that, with the 1% rule, um, you know, this is a little overpriced. Um, but that, that seems to be the general feedback from uh, many of the team members that they're having a hard time trying to find properties that qualify for USDA financing. So we've got New York, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Washington, and Texas. Although, is Derek actively um, working with you guys on Team uh, Six, Derek Bridget? Um, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, Derek is. Okay. He As I thought, Derek was uh, really busy doing a lot of stuff on his own. Um, but look, all of these areas in New York, if you're trying to find something really close to New York city, yeah, you're going to have a hard time, but if you get an hour outside of New York, you know, there's tons of USDA. I, I, I don't know if you guys heard, I don't remember who had him on. I listened to, um, I think his name was Bill Pace from the USDA. Um, he said that what was the number? 82% of the land mass in this country is USDA. That means 82% of, you know, not 82% of cities, but 82% of the land mass, they go up to city sizes up to 25, even 35,000 people sometimes. If you think about how many cities there are in the United States, there's a lot. I just can't imagine that you can't find deals. I'm going to challenge uh, anyone that wants to tell me right now we can't find. I bet you in 10 minutes I can find, for Team 6, I think I could find three properties within the next seven minutes. And, you know, Jim, I, I would not take that bet because I know, I know that you have went. <laughs> because I, I would I would agree with you there. In fact, and I think what I'm going to have to do, uh, and with Tam, with Pam is on, on our weekly Monday call. 
is to maybe do a reset with the team because it seems like of the 10 people that we have, I believe five or six are, are pretty active. And then, you know, the other, the other folks are not as active. So I think I just, we just need to get with the team and say, Hey, you know, let's some hold, let's hold some accountability to each one of you and say, how much time are you even spending in trying to find these properties? Yeah. So I think that's That's the reset that I think we're going to have to set for next for, yeah. for our, our meeting next Monday. And uh, Gerald is in Virginia. Uh, I know, you know, I mean, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Most of Virginia is a poor state. Virginia and West Virginia, most of it, most of the state is a poor state. By definition, if it's poor, it's USDA. So are there some big cities that you absolutely cannot find a good, you know, a, 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 a good priced property? Yes, anytime you get around DC, anytime you get around the big cities, even the big cities of a poor state, like uh, Mississippi is the poorest state in, in the union. But if you get close to Tupelo or um, um, Jackson, you know, you're gonna have a hard time finding quote unquote great deals, you know, but you've just got to get outside of those. Um, look for small towns in particular that have a big university because very close to that town, the university in the town will not be USDA, but really close to those uh, towns. That's a big economic driver for you. And, and that's all you need. You only need one big economic driver for, to make a small town very profitable. And Pennsylvania, come on. Pennsylvania, that's as, almost as redneck as Tennessee. I know you can find <laughs> USDA properties in Pennsylvania. So, yep. and, and remember guys, if it's not USDA, as long as the property, even if it's in Philadelphia proper, if you can get a HUD loan instead of USDA loan, why did we want a USDA loan? High leverage, why did we want high leverage? So you guys aren't struggling with a capital raise. So that's the real key. It's not that it's USDA. That's why I'm doing away with the USDA name and just going with Goya. Am I going to still encourage you guys to do USDA areas? I am because you get a lot more for bang for your buck. But if you find something in Seattle, if you find something in Dallas, I, I was just uh, offered a Dallas property today that uh, in a great, great, great part of Dallas, 44 units, that if you could get a HUD loan on it, the loan was still very reasonable. The price per door was very reasonable. You know, so we just need to try harder. We need to put our nose to the grindstone and say, we're gonna do this. Let's, if we have to all focus on one property, you know, um, and, and we might have to, again, start doubling up on a team. If a team, like right now, you know, with team uh, 46, I think, is it 46 that has the four properties? Yes, team 46. If team 46 is gonna need to raise, let's say 3 million between them, or even 4 million between them, that's gonna be hard. So of those four properties, could we split that amongst four teams or could we get two different teams to team up together and take them down? It's better for all of you to get on a deal than it is, it's not as important for you guys to have your own deal. You know, it's important to get on a deal. That's the, the purpose of the challenge is get on a deal and start raising money for a deal. Uh, if you don't have the money, here's again, I'm going to go back to, I don't want you raising money, but every one of you are going to have to raise money because so far, none of the teams have stepped forward and said, hey, we have enough money to take down the deal that we want by ourselves. We only have $400,000 amongst us, but we're only looking at one and a half, $2 million properties. So we know we can take it down by ourselves. So far, not any team has done that, which was one of the keystone principles that I wanted you guys to work with. But having said all of that, uh, I'll get down off my soapbox again. Uh, the key here is for you guys to own a property in 90 days. That's the key. 
Let's do whatever we have to do to make that happen, but let's not get out over our skis and do something foolish that causes us to lose money. We get so aggressive in our thinking that uh, we're going to be able to raise $2 million and we're going to do it, uh, you know, in with private equity money only. And we're going to, and all of a sudden you're right up against the, the thing and it's not, you know, the, the date and it's not working. This is not easy, guys. Raising money is not easy. You think it's hard finding properties? Start making those 100 phone calls a day. You'll see what hard is. But you can't be discouraged with that. You just got to keep grinding, keep grinding. And if I had only an hour a day to commit to this, I'd spend half of it looking for properties. I'd spend the other half making as many phone calls as I possibly could for that investor money because I know it's coming. I know it's coming and I want to be prepared. Hey, Jim, with that said, I do have, have three questions for you. Yes, sir. Uh, my, my first question being uh, with the HUD financing, what's the minimum uh, down payment requirement on that with HUD financing? So HUD does have products that'll get you into the high 80s or even 90%. Will we qualify for it on each and every property? I don't know because we have not done one yet. So far, even though this is a USDA challenge, we have not we haven't even asked someone to give us uh, a loan paper for USDA or HUD, either one. Okay. So uh, my second, uh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, second question is to either you or to Daryl. Uh, so for their capital raise, uh, so let's say, you know, the, let's say I make a few calls. I have a few people that are interested. Um, Daryl, are you going to be hosting? So instead of having one-on-one -on -one calls with investors wanting more information. Are you having like a group uh, seminar, a group webinar um, so that you can kill more, you know, kill all birds with one stone? Yes, sir. Uh, friend, I will be having um, a webinar and I, I, I'm actually, I'm trying to think of a day that I could, that I could help and, and get it done uh, because by me heading down to Columbia. But yes, I am planning on doing that for sure. That, that's no doubt. And I do believe my team members are also going to, going to possibly do it too. So I'll say something to you guys, whoever has their webinar first, every team member should try to be there. Every single team member from every single team should try to be there. And when it's not, when it's not your turn, support the other team. And I would tell you, bring as many investors with you as you can. And if we all do that together, team one is, is racing to the finish line. Let's help them get there. When team two gets their deal, let's all support them and help them get there. Team three and team four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's collectively, because even if you have an investor, don't be afraid if that investor says, you know what, I like that deal, I'd like to invest. We'll figure out what that looks like. Don't try to hoard your investor. If they're ready to say yes, let them say yes. OK, but most importantly, what's probably going to happen is they're going to say no. But every no is closer to a yes. So if I were team nine, I'd be trying to get all of my investors at eight other seminars so that I could ply them up and get them used to the right questions, get them used to being asked for money. And by the time I come around, hopefully they're finally ready to say yes. I want to warm them up. I want to get them ready to invest. And the more webinars they watch and are able to listen and ask questions, the more comfortable they're going to become. And they'll go, you know, I thought that was a pretty good deal. And they raised the money for it. So I guess I was right. And then the second one, they're like, hmm, I didn't even think it was that good a deal. But man, they raised all the money for it. Maybe I was wrong. Third one comes along. They're like, you know, I'm starting to feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> so there's, there is a little, little bit of that, you know, you need to condition them. And that means you don't have to condition them every single time. You can say, hey, one of our other team members is holding a webinar tonight. I, I think you should attend just so you have an idea of the type of properties that we're going after. Just so you have an idea of what some of the questions everyone should be asking. And you'll learn more and more about how to invest in these assets and why you should. So if you have a chance, let's get on that webinar. I'll go with you. And if you have questions, you can ask them right then and there. Or if you have questions, you can ask me personally 
you know, uh, later on. So. And then my final question is, I know that there are several uh, investor platforms that can collect investor names, you know, for you know, syndication and things like that. Uh, as we start collecting these investor names, uh, Daryl, how, how are you collecting these names and are you having them inputted directly into a software program or are we just at this point just at this point just kind of collecting their collecting their information? Um, so you know, how do address. I collect? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought you was. I'm no, sorry. Yeah, about that. Go yeah. Ahead. yeah, go ahead. Oh, that was for me or was it for someone else? Uh, either ahead, you or Jim. Oh, oh well, well, um, the way I collect data is from uh, uh, different sources. I have. I have Facebook one source. I have my, my weekly meetings as another source. And then I also have LinkedIn as another source, right? And 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 so when I when people try to uh, when people connect with me, whether it's on Facebook, my my meetings or whatever, there's information that they that they release to me for and then I put them into my database. And and I and I tag them or label them, whether if they have uh, been verified. Verified means if I have spoken with them, or if I have not. And and then what I do after I get them all in, because I have over fourteen, I have well over fourteen hundred people in my CRM. So now what I'm doing is reaching out to those that I have not verified, or I have not spoken with. Okay. And and then once I talk with them, I was I will switch them over. That way now I could try to keep that relationship going. And then when I get another opportunity, investment opportunity, I'll make sure that they get it. But I collect data from different sources, but all the all of the sources are asking for certain information and it goes and, and I put it right into my database, upload it through Excel. Okay, so, okay. Uh, guys, I'm going to drop a link in the chat right now. And anyone that's on their computer, I want you to um, open up the link. Whoops, hold on, everyone. And just call out I whenever you have it open. I. Yep, I have it open. Hi. 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 Okay, so we have several people that have it open. What is that? And where did it come from? Contact list. Contact list, which is where? In the GOB network. Yeah. On the GOB drive. Yeah. At drive, this is a list of professionals by industry, chiropractors, dentists, physicians, veterinarians. So I don't know how many people are on this list, but if I were to open one, uh, let me just open one that's in Excel because it will tell me the number. Looks like there's at least more than 100 more than 150, more than 200, more than 250, more than 300, more than 350, more than 400, more than 50. So the list just keeps going and that's just one industry group. And that's still, and that's still in the A's by the way. That, that whole list right there, yeah. Never got out of the A's. That was just Alaska, Alabama, and Arkansas. So Did how many look? people? How many people could you call or send an email to or drop a postcard in the mail? So there's lots of potential, and these are all high net worth individuals. Every single one of these people have enough money to invest in your deal. You don't even need to, you don't even need to, to, I don't know anybody. Well, okay. I don't know any of them either, but that doesn't mean I can't start to send them a, a postcard or send them an email or send them a text or give them a call and say, 
you know, hey, I help high net worth individuals pay zero dollars in taxes by using real estate depreciation. Is that something you might be interested in? Nope, okay, next. Yep, great tip, thanks. Okay, and you guys, probably no one even knows that's on the Google Drive. So is that a valuable resource? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. There's only, that's yes. only one little bitty resource on the Google Drive. There's millions more just like that. So if you're not in there poking around, think of that thing as a giant library, all built around real estate. If you could go into your local library and it had just nothing but every book on the shelf is about real estate. That's what this is. This is your library of knowledge for real estate. And trust me, it's not complete. But all of the resources you need to make this deal happen or any deal happen are already there. All right, guys, 709, I'm going to call it quits. Everyone go get uh, a glass of their favorite beverage. And uh, nine months from now, if there's any surprises, uh, you can name them uh, Jim or GOB or Jeroma or <laughs> corn like that belongs oh, in a javelin. <laughs> All right, guys. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks a lot, Jim. Bye, everybody.